Okay, so let's get into making a mousetrap powered car. So in your bag of tricks, this is the, the selection of things that you've got. Okay, so you've got two plastic panels um, <coughs> that are, have all these in holes in them. Um, you've got two of the larger red wheels, two small wheels, a selection of uh, zip ties, some uh, short pieces of dowel, a mousetrap obviously, because it's a mousetrap powered car, 30 centimetre piece of dowel, a straw and a piece of string. All right, so these are the things that we're going to use to make this, okay, or something like that. Uh, it's a vehicle that will be powered by the spring in the mousetrap. All right, so let's, let's get to it. So first of all, let's look at these panels. Now, I want you to examine these corners. So the holes in the corners have these little splines in them. Let's see if I can, no, that's probably not gonna do it. But okay, so you've got these splines in there. That means when you put the dowel into those corners, it'll grip it and it won't just rotate. Every other hole doesn't have them, so the dowel will rotate freely in it. Okay, so that's what we'll use for our axles. But these corner ones, they are used to hold them together. Now we only need these, if you're looking at the prototype, we only need these far apart enough, enough to fit the, the trap in. So we're going to use the shorter pieces. So if you just wedge it all in there like that, we're only going to use three of them, okay? Because we need to leave a section free for the, uh, the string to go down. Now, we only need it about this wide. And you may, you may need to trim these down a little bit, okay? Maybe, maybe not. But we only need it as wide as that to fit that on it. Okay, let me just clear the decks here a bit. Okay, we only need it that wide. So this comes in tight against it, okay? So go and do that, and you've got the two panels and the three pieces there. All right, so this is what you should have. You've got them parallel to each other, uh, just with three of the rods, and that should fit nice and tight in there. So we want to actually get it clinked in, and you don't have one opposite here because that's where the string is going to come down to the axle, okay? And the spring needs to be on the outside. So if you've got a, if you've got a mouse on it, a little picture of the mouse needs to be clamped in there. And then we're going to get this, and we're going to lash, <coughs> lash this in this position. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So. It's kind of looking like that. Now, uh, the only thing that's holding this vertically is the zip tie, but I really, I really got those corners and pressed them in good. Okay, so it's it's gripping across there just from the me pressing it, and it's sitting on that piece of dowel. All right, and I'm just going to trim that off because that'll annoy me. Righto. Okay, so now we need, uh, the, well, we need the axles. So if we get these two will do the job, okay? And the driven one is going to be down here, okay? So the driven one is going to be these. Now, if you these plates and these here are made by the same company. So if you look in the center, you've got the same splines as you have in the corner there. So that will actually grip the axle, okay? Now, we need to do a bit of fiddling around because we're going to use the straw, pieces of the straw, as spaces so it, the axle doesn't move this way. So what you do, if you're going to get the driven ones on, they are not going to be right on the end there like that. Okay, so they're not going to be, I'll put it like this, they're not going to be like that because we need a space between these two here. 
so we can roll it up. So if you come back, maybe three, three holes, and you just gotta make sure that it is actually all lined up nicely. Okay, so now I put the other one on. Okay, let's get that under the camera properly. So you can see I've got all this lateral movement here, which is gonna be really awkward. But I can put pieces of this in here and in here to stop it from moving sideways. Okay, now, if you want to measure it, go right ahead, but I'm just gonna eyeball it, and I'm gonna cut pieces, pull the wheels back off, fit them onto the axles, and put the wheels back on. All right, so, I'll hold it up a bit to the camera, but on these back axles, on this axle now, it, it doesn't have much lateral movement because just here and just here, I've put pieces of this, okay? Literally, I didn't properly measure it. Actually, I could probably go in a bit more. You don't have to have it too tight because they do need to move freely, okay? So they've got to spin, but you don't want it moving too much that way. That's, that's pretty good. And you need a gap here because the string is gonna wrap around this axle. So you need room to be able to wrap it. All right, so now we need the, uh, the other axle, which is just the, the non-driven axle. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, only this time it's just gonna be these little wooden wheels, which are really just there to make it work. Okay, and this one can go up against that, uh, that other dowel because this one isn't driven. And we'll need to make sure we do the same thing with the straws because we don't want any sideways movement with it. So as it is, yeah, okay, it rolls, but we've got all this movement. So I'm gonna fix that movement with more of the straws. All right, so we've got front wheels that do pretty well, okay? We've got back wheels. There's not a lot of lateral movement there. Life is good. Okay, so now we've got to fix up the engine. All right, now what we do is we get the 30 centimeter piece of dowel and we're gonna lash it to this side. Okay, so where the spring actually attaches to the, uh, I think they call this the hammer of the, the mousetrap. We're gonna lash it there like that. So for that, we're gonna use three of the small zip ties. Okay, so you should have around about four of those zip ties, we're gonna use three of them to lash it to that side there. So you just sort of pick that up, slide that in under. Okay, and this wriggles in like that. Obviously, if you've got a group doing this, you can use multiple hands. I put the first one right up in that corner. And the second one down at the bottom. And the third one, I'm gonna actually wrap it around, see where the spring actually comes over the hammer. I'm gonna actually wrap that little package deal up in this. Okay, make sure they're as tight as you can get them. Okay, cool. And then I'm just gonna trim off the offending bits. All right, so that's the lever arm, and then with the fourth one of these, right at the other end, I'm just gonna put it around here, and that'll actually give something like a little hook that you can tie off onto. Okay, 
So the only thing we've got left to do now is the string. Mine's fallen on the floor, but here we go. All right, so starting at this end, just make a, a, a nice firm knot around that, and it doesn't have to be an awesome fishing knot, it's just got to not come undone. Okay, which could be a dad joke there, but I'll leave that alone. All right, then this, as you lie it across nice and tight and bring it down. This is why we didn't put a, uh, a cross piece there because we want to be able to just bring this down here and it's got to wrap around this. Now, this is the tricky bit, okay? This is where you need, need a help. If you want it to go in that direction, when it's driving, you want to be heading in that direction, okay? Which means when you roll, when you wrap this around that, you need to roll back. Okay, so when it unravels, it'll be going that way. Okay, so what what I'm going to do, which will be really hard to see on the camera, but I'm just going to loosely wrap it round to start with. You might actually have way too much string. Um, really, you probably only need about that much. I'm going to just trim this off a bit. Because if you've got too much string, it just makes it more awkward. Okay. Then I'm going to wrap this around. If it wraps around the other way, it just will go backwards, which you know, it's not wrong. It just probably would be better if it's going forwards. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap that round finger tight. And of course my old man hands are in the way and you can't see, but that's all I'm doing. It's wrapping it around finger tight, okay? Then I'm going to lift this up a little so it makes a bit of slack in the string. And I'm going to, with my other hand, wind the axle. So as I lift the lever arm up, I'm winding the axle. It's kind of like you always want the string to be in tension. Okay. So you just patiently take up the slack on the string. So that's fully primed, ready to go. So if you release it, that's how it works. Okay, now, for your assignment, you're going to be running this puppy several times with different weights on it. Okay, now the big idea behind this is you're giving the same force each time. This, this is the, the force that's being delivered, and it's the same force. The spring is the same all the way through. So that means if we increase the mass, we should get less and less acceleration as we go. So how we're going to do that is by lashing bolts to it, okay? So you can lash bolts to the front here, uh, you could lash them to this cross piece. Um, you could lash them to that cross piece as well. Just not lash, lash them to the axle, obviously. And don't lash the cross here because it's going to interfere with the string. I wouldn't lash it on the sides simply because it'll make it sort of go in one direction. It'll make it uh, veer, okay? It'll be heavy on, on one side. But if you lash it across there, it should be kind of centered. So. You start off with no bolts, that's the first set of data. Then you lash one bolt to it, that's the next bit. Okay, then you're gonna have two bolts, three bolts, four bolts. Okay, that is the mousetrap powered path for the assignment.